With patch 1.5 coming close to release, we've had both the character banner as well as weapon banners for Hoho revealed. While Hoho may not have the most favorable of banners to look at, all the characters do have merits that are worth talking about. Come with me as we discuss Hoho's character and light cone banners. A lot of people are looking at this banner and thinking, this doesn't look that great at all. In some ways, it's true, but there's a lot of consideration that can be made for each character as well. And it's important to also look at the main target of the banner, that being Kuoho. As a new player coming into the game, you're given two sustainers for free. Natasha, an Abundance character, and Fire MC following the Path of Preservation. However, even with Fire MC being a sustainer, you can slide into your second team. In the future, once we get new paths, you may not even consider them as a preservation character, which also means now you're lacking a second dedicated sustainer. Consider pulling for Huoho to fill that need. Don Hung is the first character on Huoho's banner, who we receive a copy of at the beginning of the game. Don Hung's core kit revolves around him trying to use his skill on the enemy to plant a slow debuff on them. By doing so, his ultimate will be able to deal more damage to that enemy. While pulling on this banner, an important idol in that you should be on the lookout for is his E2, which allows for his talent to be reduced from a 2 turn cooldown to a 1 turn cooldown. Something to consider about his talent is it applies resistance penetration to his next attack, which is quite rare to have on a character, and especially available so actively. However, in order to activate it, you need the character to use their ability on him, which leads to a really great synergy between himself and Huo Huo, who can target her heal specifically onto him, as well as the two adjacent targets. Not only that, but if you pair the two together, you can run your Huo Huo on the new planner set, Penacolony Land of the Dreams, in order to allow for her to provide a bonus 10% wind elemental damage. These two have a really great synergy with each other, and Don Hung can easily take advantage of Huo Huo's full kit and what it has to offer. Don Hung is our only wind main damage dealer that is available at all times to summon, so for terms of type coverage, it may be worth building him to help out. Arlen's the next character that appears on the banner. As a Berserker, Arlen's got a bit of an odd kit to work with. His skill consumes 15% of his HP, which, as a trade-off, his skill doesn't actually cost a skill point. Arlen requires a lot of playing around in his kit to allow him to work as best as possible as a character while dealing more damage the lower his HP is. If I had to say any breakpoints for Arlen you should consider, it would be going for his E1, then his E4, and then finally his E6. The more idolins you have on him, the more complete he feels as a character. Hoho can help Arlen survive, since her talent allows for Arlen to be healed even when it's not his turn. We don't know what percent of the HP this will trigger, but you can possibly trigger Arlen's skill to bring him below 50% and then use his ultimate to deal more damage at E6. The last character to bring up is Serval. She's another of the characters that we get for free at the start of the game, and she's probably the main hit on the banner outside of Woho herself. Serval is an erudition character with a lightning element. Her AoE potential is incredible. She can apply shock to enemies with her skill, and her ultimate has no damage fall off and can attack all enemies on the field, while also extending the shock state by two turns. All of her idolins are really good to grab. Her E1 allows her to play a bit more skill point positive once enemies are shocked, because it has splash. Her E2 allows for you to take more advantage of her talent, giving her a ton more energy. Her E4 allows her ultimate to also have a chance of shocking the enemies, and her E6 allows for more damage overall on shocked enemies. Pairing her up with Woho is also very easy. Attack percent up as well as giving back more energy to allow for more ultimates to be used is super helpful you can potentially keep cycling it more and more together. Each of these characters all have their merit, and for early game, they're all very incredible. In late game, they still hold up well together as well, and only get better with more idolins as a whole. There's good value in this banner, and I'd recommend it heavily while you're also trying to go for Huoho herself. Now, let's move on to the Light Cones. Her Light Cone, Night of Fright, increases her energy regeneration rate by 12%, allows for a 10% heal of the max allies' HP when they use their ultimates, and also provides up to a 12% attack boost to all allies that are healed lasting 2 turns. With this information given from the Light Cone, we can analyze that Huoho may actually need a bit of energy to get herself going. 12% energy regeneration on the Light Cone is really good pickup, as well as the extra healing from when allies use their ultimates is great as well. It pairs incredibly well with Huoho's kit, and there's no loss of stats at all. Shared Feeling is a pretty good Light Cone. At R5, you'll be able to provide 20% extra outgoing healing, as well as up to 4 energy to all allies each time you use your skill. It's very little, but energy back is better than getting none at all. 
Subscribe for more is a pretty light cone. Shout out Sigma Nifen. A hunt light cone that I actually don't see many people use. It's flat 24% bonus damage to your basic attack and skill, going up to 48% at R5. There are better options that you can use, but if you were to snag some of these, you could potentially use it on a couple of your hunt characters. However, not many of them can take advantage of the second half of the ability, which is providing an additional 24 to 48% damage just by holding onto your ultimate and not using it. The final light cone, Trend of the Universal Market, is also a niche light cone. A preservation light cone that when attacked, you can have a chance to apply burn on the target, dealing according to 40% of the user's defense, going up to 80% at R5. At first, I didn't think this was really all that good. However, it could be potentially nice to throw on a preservation character on a dot team, to also try and maximize the buffs that you receive from the new relic set, Prisoner in Deep Confinement, allowing for every dot the target enemy is afflicted with, the wearer will ignore 6% of the target's defense up to a max of 3 dots. So a free 18% defense shred at 3 dots is really good. When looking at this weapon banner, unless you can make very much use of the niche scenarios that these light cones fill, you're better off trying to use other light cones on your huo huo. This could include post-op, which provides up to a 16% energy regeneration rate, Bailu's light cone, which increases your max HP and outgoing healing, Perfect Timing is also really good, which increases your effect resistance now going healing. Not to mention, we also have the new Event Light Cone that's releasing, which is essentially a baby Bailu Light Cone. Instead of pulling for her Light Cone, I'd much rather you pull for Huopo, but try and go for other Light Cones. If you don't have any of your Light Cones available, the Event Light Cone would be plenty. And that's all I've got with the breakdown for these banners. I appreciate you for sticking it out to the end. And if you want, drop a like, comment, and maybe subscribe if it was able to help clear things up for you. Good luck to all Huo Huo Wanters. She's a very cute little fox with anxiety that I can appreciate. Till next time, peace.